Welcome to the video. My name is Alexia and on this channel I cover all things Azure. And today we are continuing the Data Factory series. And in today's video I'm going to cover configurable pipelines. This is a topic that is already building on top of the topics that I have covered in the previous videos, like lookup activity, forage activity, and dynamic content. If you are not familiar with those topics, please check out the links in the description before watching this video. And now, what are configurable pipelines? In many cases, when we are building data integrations using Data Factory, we have steps that repeat from one process to another. For example, when we are moving binary files from staging area to data lake. This is a pretty common operation when building a data platform in Azure. For these processes that repeat from one pipeline to another, we can build generalized and iterative pipelines to Data Factory that use configuration files. And in this video, I'm going to show how that will happen. So now let's go to the presentation and I will show what we are going to build today. Today, we are going to build configurable pipeline. In this setup, we are going to have a data factory pipeline and in that pipeline, we are going to have a copy activity. This copy activity will just do some binary copies from the blob storage back to that same blob storage. We have wrapped that copy activity to a for each activity. So this will be a dynamic copy activity. However, today we are not going to pass down the instructions for our for each activity using data factory parameters. Instead, we are going to have a storage account. In that storage account, we are going to have a configuration file. This configuration file will contain all the necessary instructions that our copy activity needs in order to execute those binary copies. In order for us to get that configuration content to our pipeline, we are going to use the lookup activity to fetch the contents of that JSON file and then pass them to our for each activity, which will then pass it down to our copy activity, which will then handle the copy. Now let's check out how that configuration file looks. Here we have one example how this configuration configuration file could look. So basically in that configuration file we would have an array and then we would have some objects in that array. In this case we are having two objects in array. In these objects we have all the same properties. We have four properties. First we have a property called source container that is saying the source container for our data. Then we have a source file name that is telling what is the source file name in that container. Then we have a sync container property that will tell the sync container for our copy activity. And last, we have the sync file name. So what will be the file name after the copy has executed? So in this case, we would be adding underscore copy to our file name. So we know that it has been copied over. And we are also copying it from the source container to the sync container. And in this case, this would happen for two files. In many similar data factory tutorials, people are using database tables for this configuration. Now I want to break it down quickly why I would say that using files is a better way to go than using database tables. My first point would be that version control process would be way more straightforward when using files, because files are more easily version controllable than database table data. Because for files, we can use, for example, AC copy in our CIC CD pipelines in order us to copy them to the correct location in the next environment when we are deploying the solution. With database tables, deploying that data, it's a bit harder, but it's possible to do, but I would say it's more difficult and not so straightforward. Also, the storage account is a cheaper resource than Azure SQL database. And in many cases, your platform that you are building to Azure using Data Factory might not even contain Azure SQL database. Also, as a last point, using JSON allows us to use more complex data types like arrays and objects that are not supported in Azure SQL database. So we have a bit more data types to play around with when we are building our configurations. Next, let's jump to Data Factory and see how we would build this configurable pipeline. Now we are in the data factory. First, I will open up the storage account and show that I have already created three containers for this tutorial 13. One for the configuration, one for the source and one for the sync. In the source container, we have two files. 
file1.txt and file2.txt. I have just added some random content to these files since the content doesn't matter since we are just doing binary copies and we are not caring about the content. Our sync container is still empty since we are just going to copy those two files there and we have not yet done the copy. In our configuration container we have the configuration file for our pipeline. This configuration JSON file contains exactly the same content that I showed during the presentation part of this video. So we have there two objects and those objects are going to give instructions for our copy activity in data factory and tell from which container and which file we are going to copy to which container to which file. In this configuration file we have the exactly the same contents that I already showed in the presentation part. So we have there two objects and then we have there four properties in, in each object. And these properties will guide our copy activity to copy those files from our source container to our sync container and just add underscore copy to the file names. Next, let's go back to the data factory and start building our pipeline. First, let's create a folder for our tutorial 13. Then let's create a pipeline to that folder and let's name our pipeline according to our naming conventions. Then we want to create a folder for our data sets and then we want to create a new data set to our folder. We are going to select Azure Blob Storage and then we are going to select JSON as our format. Since now we are creating a data set for our configuration file. Now let's name our JSON file according to our naming conventions. Then we want to add some parameters for our JSON file to make this bit more dynamic. We're going to add parameters container and file name. Then we are going to use the dynamic content to populate the container and file name parts of our file path in this dataset. Next we can add lookup activity to our pipeline and let's name this lookup as lookup configuration and then go to the settings tab and let's find our JSON file that we just created. In this case we want to untap the first row only setting since we want to fetch all the all the contents that we have in this configuration file. If you remember, we had there two objects. If we would tap that first row only, we would only get one object out that configuration file. And this is not the case that we want. And we want also the lookup activity to return an array so we can iterate over that array. Next, we want to populate our datasets parameters. So for our container, it's going to be tutorial 13 configuration and our file name is going to be our configuration file file name. Now we can actually try to debug this pipeline and see that we are able to fetch the configuration contents. Our pipeline went through fine and we can see that our lookup activity returned an array of two objects. And now we have basically fetched the contents of our configuration file to our pipeline, so we are able to use these contents in our following activities. Let's continue building our pipeline. Now we want to add a for each activity and let's name our for each activity to for each configuration. Then we want to use the dynamic content to populate our for each activities item list that is expecting an array. So we will use the lookup activities output value to populate this. And this output value will contain the array that is coming out from the configuration file that I just showed to you. And then we can just add one weight activity to our for each activity to see that our pipeline execute this weight activity two times since we have two objects that we are going to iterate over in this for each configuration loop. And we can click debug and see that this actually happens. And our pipeline already finished and we can see that our wait activity ran two times. So it seems that our logic is working. Next, let's remove the wait activity and let's replace that with the copy data activity. Let's name our copy data activity to copy data from blob to blob. And now we would need to create a new data set that we are going to use to copy the files from the blob storage back to that same blob storage. Let's again select Azure blob storage and then let's select binary and then let's name our binary dataset according to our naming conventions. Then we want to add some parameters for our dataset since we are going to use the same dataset for our source and for our sync but with different parameters. So let's add a container parameter and file name parameter. And again let's use dynamic content to populate the corresponding sections in our file path 
with those parameters. Let's go back to our pipeline and let's configure our source and let's select the dataset that we just created and then let's configure our parameters. Let's start with the container configuration. If you remember from our for each video, we are going to use the item reference to reference the item in the current iteration. So we are going to add there at item and then we are going to add dot source container. So basically this will fetch the source container from the current configuration that is running in the loop. And then for our file name, we are going to use again at item and then we are going to use the source file name part of our configuration. Then we are going to configure our sync. The process is more or less the same here, but we are going to now use the sync configurations. For, so for our container, we are going to use the sync container. And then for our file name, we are going to use the sync file name for our file name parameter. So now we have configured the sync and source correctly. We can go back to our pipeline level and I can one more time to show you the outputs of our lookup configuration activity so you would understand what happens there. So basically we have there that array that we are passing down to our for each activity and in that array we have two objects. In that object we have those properties that I just defined to the source and to the sync. So when we are running that for each activity the at item reference will fetch the source container and source file name from this current iteration to that copy activities source part. And then the same process will happen to our sync part, but using these sync configurations here. Now we're done with our pipeline and we can click the debug button to see that it works as we expect. Our pipeline already finished and we can see that we ran the lookup configuration and after that we ran the for each configuration and then we ran two times that copy data from blob to blob. Now we can go back to our storage account and check out our sync container and see that we have those two files there. But now we have added that underscore copy to that file name like we defined in the configuration. So it seems that everything worked fine and our pipeline works as it should. The last thing that I want to add is that we could make this pipeline even way more configurable by adding some parameters to this pipeline. And then by using those parameters, we could decide which configuration file to fetch. So we could use this same pipeline to fetch multiple different files using multiple different configurations. And that is all that I wanted to cover today. Now you should have understanding how to build configurable pipelines in the data factory. If you found this video helpful, please leave a like and consider subscribing to the channel for more Azure and data factory content. Now I thank you for watching and see you in the next video.